killed us like six times. <laughs> Just let you know. It's very, you know, people were in our inner circle very curious about today. Yeah. And what did you say? You're going to try to get me to take a swing at <laughs> you today. <laughs> you said you were going to fight in a Murano. <laughs> Never been in a fight in a Murano? A, no, no, I've never been. Fifth a, time ever being in a Murano. <laughs> yeah, you still got your temp registration on there, I man. I do. Yeah. So yeah. cute. I love it. <laughs> Interesting though, I wish I would have put off the the buying of the vehicle for another week because it would have been very interesting to see you in the Kia. Yeah, like, well, I, see, I like, never was never in the old studio. You've heard yeah. so many jokes about it. You're like, this place sucks. Like, it smells like Fritos in here. <laughs> it smells like Fritos and sadness. <laughs> Sad, yes, and shame. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Jesus, that sounds the same as the last one. After you hit that subscribe button, be sure to head over to sportscaster.com and also follow hashtag sports on sportscaster.com. Premier episode will be Saturday, July 20th at 8 a.m. It was a very interesting uh, topic that came up from uh, Greg Thompson. You know, we're on Twitter, there's a lot of these inner circles for Bills fans uh, and, and people that cover the Bills. Um, he, had, he brought up his bold prediction for the Bills in 2019. And he said, um, he said, uh, Trent Murphy having double digit sacks. And I replied as a goofball, like I usually am. I said, You mean double digit games? Yeah, like, games played. <laughs> games played. And, uh, it, we, you know, we went into a discussion. I said, I don't think it's that bold given the animals that are around Murphy. And you said, you think that is a pretty bold statement? Yeah, I mean Murphy's never had more than nine sacks, and yeah. the year he had nine sacks, I mean that Washington defense was beastly that year. Yeah, I remember he had Ryan Kerrigan on the other side with I think thirteen or fourteen sacks that season. Yeah, that's um, true. You know he had uh, what's his name in the middle there? Uh, was it is it Nix or Knox or somebody like that? It's a short name that plays their okay. defensive tackle position, and he had four yeah. sacks that year, which is just a, a, immense for a nose tackle, <laughs> nose tackle position, yeah. right? It's a, and he was playing at an outside linebacker position because they were in a three-four that year, so yeah. it's a different position for him because he's playing a four-three defensive end. Um, you know, and before that year, he had never had more than four sacks in a season. Hmm. So, I mean, he's young. He's only been in the league, what, four seasons? I think yeah. this is his fifth year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility, but I think it's I think it's a bold statement considering that Jerry Hughes hasn't even been a double-digit sack guy for, what, the last four years? The last and four years, he has 22 combined. Yeah. So, I mean, and he's, the prim- he, he's by all accounts, the primary pass rusher. Well, that, team, right? Anyone who's rushing, you know, on the on the is on the right last on the right side of the defense is going to be your primary pass rusher. Yeah. My, I guess my, I always like to think of what's on the line. So you got Star, Oliver, and Hughes. They're mm-hmm. going to be playing on there. Phillips. You really think? Yeah. Oh no. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. In, in in the rotation. Yeah. I know he's never had double digit sacks. However, because of the sin, the, sin, the situation that's going on with Shaq Lawson, mm-hmm. they didn't extend him as a fifth year option. You got to think that Lawson's probably not in their long-term plans, even though they run a very rotational defensive front. Murphy and Hughes are going to probably spend the most time out there. Um, yeah, they, so they want to re- rotate it, the it, inter- interior. It'll guys switch more. from last year, right? So yeah. last year it was Shaq with Murphy rotating in. This year it's got to be Murphy probably with Shaq rotating in. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, so he'll see more snaps because of the animals you have. Four of the linemen have to be assigned to those other three, or else you're going to lose. If you don't, if you don't put four guys on Latule, um, Oliver, and Hughes, mm-hmm. you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah, that's what that's what the Bills not even blitzing. You know, when they end up blitzing, so you're going to have a one-on-one matchup with a tackle that is, for I mean, for old school mentality, more of a run blocker than a pass blocker. Yeah. So Murphy can, will have a chance to get in the backfield a little bit more, and plus, even if they decide to chip him with a back, which I don't think they'll chip him. They'll chip Hughes. Mm-hmm. You got to think, he's coming off the edge. If they decide to, to chip him, I don't think it makes sense. But if they decide to blitz on his side, the back will have to take out the blitzer, and then he's still got a one-on-one with the, with the right tackle. So I just think just by attrition, he's going to have – I think the Bills are going to be ahead in more games in 2019. They're gonna more of an opportunity to pin their ears back. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, yeah they'll, have, they'll have a chance to do it, and – the, the guys that you want to focus on on that defensive front are going to be Oliver Starr and, uh, 
and um, use. So you think he's going to be a, a product of, of opportunity less so I than... I think he will. I yeah. think he's a heck of an edge defender. Okay. I think he can stop the run as well as get in on the pass. He's never had more than nine sacks because in that defense that you said in Washington that was stacked, he still was a primary focus for the defense. Sure. If you looked on that front four, if you ask any Bills fan, mm-hmm. who's the guy you're least worried about on that front four? The... Not for the Bills? For the, I mean, for the Bills. If you had to look at the defensive front of the Bills yeah. with Oliver, Latulale, Hughes, and Murphy, yeah. and you said, which one of these guys do you worry about the least as and an offense coming out? Oliver. You worry about him the least? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because you don't know where he's going to be. Yeah, you know. and, and a lot yeah. of teams passed on him because he was under, they thought he was undersized. You know, So I think, right. I think yeah, I mean, I th- your point, I think, is in terms of if you're – let's assume that Oliver is what – the Bills think he's going to be, right? Yeah, so let's assume that he comes out like a ball of fire and they have to start double-teaming. I mean, you're not, double, you're not double-teaming Star, right? I mean, that's that's not the guy that you double-team. He's, Why not? Because he, he's a space-eater. He's not a... You have to double-team him or he's going he's gonna to destroy you, your whole front. But you double-team him with the expectation that you're going to come off and you're going to get to that second level and try to get on Edmonds, right? I mean, not long-term putting a double-team on Star. Oh, boy. I don't know about that. I mean, because otherwise you're gonna leave, because otherwise you're leaving Hughes one on one, and that's not a situation you want to put any left tackle in. No, what I'm saying is, I'm saying I'm, I'm reversing the cause and effect. I'm saying Star is is very dominant in the middle of that defense with the push that he generates. Is that you have to de- you have to double him, or you're gonna create havoc right in the middle, of, right in the front of your quarterback. Yeah. And then Hughes is obviously that's the guy you use the running back to chip on. Okay. You're gonna use the running back to chip and help the left tackle out. Okay. So you have to chip with the running back on Hughes. You have to double team star. Oliver's going to be by himself. Like to your point, you don't know what he's going to be. He's right. undersized. You can one on one him. Sure. And then. Oh well, yeah, you're going to one on one him. And then you have yeah. Murphy by, by yeah. himself as well. I just think with 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 the defense that they've got, I think they obviously have to generate a better pass rush than they've gotten, specific with their front four. Yeah. So true. I think it makes sense that if if you're looking for one guy to exceed expectations I think Murphy's probably the guy that that makes the most sense but I think that's because a lot of Bills fans have and listen I I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying it I know but I think a lot of Bills fans have been very starry-eyed about Jerry Hughes over the last few seasons um Jerry Hughes hasn't been good since Mario Williams left And, and when I say good I mean a good pass rusher right he's he's very just from a number let me, let me change let me let think... me yeah he's not he's not a sack guy right he's he hasn't been that guy since since Williams left. He's been he's been better than he gets credit for against the run, and he's one of the most disruptive in terms of pressure guys in the league. But that hasn't led to numbers, right, wrong, or indifferent. It hasn't led to numbers for him though. You for him, okay. right? Yeah, right. for him. So I mean, I think I think he's gotten a lot of the credit for being. Um, it's tough for me to figure out how to put this. He's not. He's not. JJ Watt, right? He's not that echelon of guy. He's not clowny. He's not he's not gonna go out and sack the quarterback, you know, 12, 13, 14 times. It's not the guy he is. Unless he gets a lot of help on the other side. Yeah. He's just the type of guy he creates a little bit of havoc on the edge. He does better against the run than people give him credit for. Mm-hmm. Um, but teams know that they really just kind of roll away from him or they 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 push their you know they, they kind of bump their line so that the 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 line slants towards his way so you get a little bit of extra help towards him he needs somebody on the other side and there's other guys in the league that don't need anyone on the other side well, in order to be the the number the number gathering yeah. type of guys it's, it's the same because... reason it's 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 the reason that a lot of people were down on star mm-hmm. but for whatever reason they haven't taken that stance against J- Hughes right mm-hmm. because star is not a stack guy that's no, not it's never been the guy that he is he's just not he's the, he's a disruptor in the middle but for whatever reason they haven't looked at Hughes and said you've only had four sacks in the last or 22 sacks in the last four seasons you know you need to have better numbers based on what you're getting paid well, it's just interesting to me to see the, the the comparison between the two well it's star gets hammered see. for his contract but, but Hughes isn't well well yeah but the thing, I think why Star gets hammered a little bit more than Hughes is because he's played in a McDermott defense before. And people see that. Really, like, listen, you were on a defense that went to the Super Bowl. Sure. Uh, why aren't you performing? Like, you, you know, why did we give him so much money? And then you look at, he's the, he's the highest paid player prior to J- uh, Jerry's extension. Mm-hmm. And then, so you try to think, well, what, what about Jerry? What's going on? 
he had to transition into yet another defense. Sure. So probably people are giving him a little bit extra, you know, okay, you you haven't played in this defense yet. He doesn't know how to use you. Plus, the fact is, defensive ends, with the exception of Julius Peppers, mm-hmm. in a McDermott defense, they're not big stat monsters. Sure. They create havoc so that other people can shine. Mm-hmm. Now, you just said they roll away from him or they slide protection toward him. You're effectively altering what the offense is doing. Oh, sure. So... In that respect, you may not get the sack, you may not get the tackle. However, they're rolling away from you and throwing into animals anyway. Yeah. Um, you, they're rolling away from you, and then, like as we started the discussion, Trent Murphy's right there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in that respect, if you're getting a team to alter their defense, or alter their offense, and the philosophy of your defense isn't to gather numbers, because maybe Watt is Watt is expected to get a 15 sacks a year, sure. and he lines up wherever he wants. Right. I mean, the defense, the defensive coordinator is like, just if there's a just guy you want to beat, go, just yeah. go wherever you want. To, that's not Jerry. Right. Jerry's like, listen, the specific team defense that we have had led us to be second overall in pass defense last year. This is what led. It, this is this is what's going on. So, from that respect, I know we kind of spun into something else, but I could see Murphy benefiting from all of that stuff that you just talked about with everyone slanting everything toward, toward Hughes, they're rolling away from him. You got Star in the middle who doesn't garner a lot of sacks, but he, he takes care of his responsibilities in the middle. I think, yeah, I mean, I think, I think again, if, if you're looking for a guy who's going to be a standout that wasn't last year, I think that, that mm. uh, Murphy's probably the guy on that, on that defensive front. I just think that if everything that you're describing is exactly the situation that he was in with Washington – just he he still didn't get there, right? He still didn't get the double digits. So I think it's a bold did he prediction. Play a full season? Uh, I think he play, I think he played sixteen games that year. He had nine he sacks. Did. Yeah, I oh, think okay. so. I think right. so. Yeah. I was gonna say that could have been another caveat. But yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that's the only season that he's played sixteen games with the year he had nine sacks. And again, he played opposite Ryan Kerrigan, who is no slouch in his own respect when it comes to pass rush. Right. So, I mean, Kerrigan's. Yeah. I mean, there's very few guys in the league that I would take over Ryan Kerrigan when it comes to the rush of the passer. So. Yeah, I mean, Hugh, Murphy is a guy who's going to benefit from Hughes and from Starr. Um, him and Oliver are going to be the two that benefit from that. And, and ideally, Oliver turns into Marcel Darius. I mean, the, if, if that's who he becomes in terms of a penetrator and a, and a disruptor, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, because he pulls those single coverages, then Murphy's probably going to turn into a monster. But, again, I think that's a bold prediction because you're, you're reliant on a few different – He's not a guy that's going to go out and get it on his own, right? And I think that's why it's a bold prediction for me is because there's so many factors that have to fall into place for Murphy to get to that double-digit point. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not like it's out of the realm of possibility. No. I don't think it's that bold because, he, if you, like you said before, he had nine before. Sure. He's never once. had double-digit before. He had nine once. Yeah. I understand. It's not like we're talking about, I think Star's going to have double digits. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Star, Star's going to have 40 tackles this year. You're yeah. like, what? Are you, well, I, think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it, it, defined, it depends on your uh, – your definition of bold, right? I mean, bold is, I mean, it, bold is not Trey Edmonds is going to get 100 tackles. That's not a bold prediction. No. I mean, it's his job to go out and get 100 tackles. But, yeah. So, I mean, it's not bold to say that, you know, Micah Hyde's going to wind up with three interceptions, right? I mean, that's his job to that's go out and bold. intercept the ball. So, it, it, it's all dependent on your prediction of bold. And I think, 4, I think, I think yards expecting, for Allen is bold. 4,000 yards for Allen, I think, is bold. Very yeah. bold. Yes. But I think, Expecting Murphy to be a little bit better than he's ever been before, I don't think that that I don't think that's I think that's a bold prediction. He's entering his prime, so if he's going to do it, now's the time to do it, right? He's twenty six, I think, this year twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah. So this is his time where he's going to turn himself into, and he's going to, and it's another contract. It's a contract year. Yeah. Well, that's right? another thing. So too. contract yeah. year is very huge. But yeah. Guys, uh, shall we? Shall we bookend this with a bet? Yeah, we can do a we can do a bet. Let's do a bet on we this. We can do a one. bet. Last, you still owe me lunch. I Star, do still owe you lunch. Starla Tula Day. I do still owe you lunch. Well, since you wouldn't let me pay before the Brockport game that one time, so I think you paid. Oh, when we went to when we went to lunch before the ah, game. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have to try to think of a suitable bet. Would I be willing to throw this to the comment section? Yeah. So if you guys want to comment what yeah. you think the stipulation to the bet will be, I will. I will live up to it. Now, keep in mind that if it's like a, you got to wear a jersey, that you have to get a bigger jersey for me than Mario would have to get. It was to a get, 3X. So. Okay. It well, was a it's blanket. A, okay. If it's a three, okay. That, that's fair then. That's All fair. Right, so three X would fit me <laughs> snugly. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
fit you in a Joey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> basically, the, the premise is this. Uh, I don't think it's a very bold statement that um, that Trent Murphy will have double digit sacks. Ryan obviously feels that it is a bold statement. If he happens to have double digit sacks, and I, I'll win the bet. If he okay. doesn't, you'll win the bet. Okay. Is that how? Okay. Sure. So once again, uh, let us know what the heck's going to happen, what we're losing or losing. But obviously, this is gonna be, we're going to have to remember this back in the day. Yeah. But, oh, uh, trust me. You and I will keep receipts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The one thing that we're good at Fantastic. is keeping receipts, especially when one of us winds up being right. Oh, yeah. We're good, oh, at, yeah. We're good at reminding the other. Ridiculous. <laughs>